Columbia, Missouri. Columbia, Missouri. Yes. Um, and he is enjoying time with his siblings. Uh, he, uh, it, it is 22 degrees in Columbia this morning, so uh, I think I think we, we, we've got the better place. So I'm happy Miami being markedly better than Columbia, Missouri. Sorry if you're watching. Uh, <laughs>
Our Old Testament reading is found in Micah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. God's great deeds have not been reflected in his people's lives. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up. Plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from, from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people, remember what ba Balak, king of Moab, plotted and what Balaam, son of war, answered. Remember your journey from from Shittim to, to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With that shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God. Shall I come with him before shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be, be pleased with the thousand with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for, for the sin of my own soul? He has shown you, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of the age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many, of you, not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become the wisdom, become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be standing. Uh, please stand for the whole gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down and his disciples came to him. And he began to teach them and he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed
Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, and in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. And we'll see how some of him it is well with my soul. <laughs>
Now picture this. Here's a guy with two gallons of Thousand Island dressing dripping from him. And the manager asks, is there a problem? <laughs> the guy replies, is there a problem? She bought my $300 suit, it's brand new, I want a new suit. The manager says, well, if you can get your suit cleaned and, and the accidents do happen, we're really sorry about this. No, no, says, I want my suit cleaned. I don't want that. I want a brand new suit. I demand a $300 check right here and now. Well, to avoid a bigger scene, the manager goes back to the office and writes out a check for $300 and brings it to him and still fuming the angry customer's leave. Sadly, this true story happened at noon on a Sunday. So why do you suppose someone would be wearing a brand new suit on a Sunday? Do you suppose they just been to church? Do you suppose they just heard a sermon? Love your neighbor as yourself? Do unto others as you have them do unto you? Now, I don't want to be a judge about proper behavior, but to me the tragic part is that God has called us to be transformed, to be different than the rest of the world. You may expect the rest of the world to behave crudely, but not Christians, and not especially after Sunday, uh, after church. You may remember the following story, but it, it fits so well. One Sunday, as he drove home from church, a little girl turned to her mother and said, Mommy, there's something about the pastor's message today that I didn't understand. Oh, what's that? Little girl was like, well, it's, he said that God is bigger than we are. He said God is so big, he could hold the world in his hands. Is that true? He said, yes, honey, that's true. But mommy, he also said that God comes to live inside of us when we believe in Jesus as our Savior. Is that true too? Again, the mother assured the little girl that what the pastor said was true. And with a puzzled look on her face, the little girl asked, if God is bigger than us and he lives in us, wouldn't he show through? That's what the Beatitudes are about. God showing through. It's always been God's purpose that when he entered our lives, he should be allowed to fill and control them that he would show through, that he would be visible in our attitudes and actions, then the Beatitudes are like a light bulb that only shines when plugged into God's power. Nobody can be like Jesus, like Jesus can. By the Holy Spirit, he has come to live in us and with us so that he might live through us to meet the needs of hurting humanity. And when he does, others see the image of Christ shining in our lives. Let me ask you a question. How would life be uh, different if Jesus were here to take your place? What if he took your place at home? What if he performed your work on the job? Teenager, what if he sat in your desk at school? Yet, that's exactly what God wants to do. He came to live within me, to mortify the carnal works of my body, and to master the circumstances of my life, manifest his character, and minister to others to whom my life touches every day. Knowing that makes me wonder, does God ever, does anyone ever see God showing through me. Well, if they did, I know what it would look like because the Beatitudes are also a self-portrait of Christ. He was poor in spirit, although he was an almighty God, with all the rights and privileges of a deity, he made himself of no reputation and he took himself the form of a servant and was made into the likeness of men. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. He mourned. He wept for Lazarus. He wept over Jerusalem. He was a man of sorrows.
acquainted with grief. And he was meek. He hungered and thirsted after righteousness. He was merciful. The measure of life of Christ by these qualities, and you will find that he modeled them all. So nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus stood on a mountainside near the Sea of Galilee, and thousands of people have come to listen to him, and he delivered some of the most challenging statements we'll ever hear. We call them the Beatitudes. A Beatitude is a declaration of blessedness. They are the how to be attitudes towards God, towards our neighbors, and our opponents. Or, as another preacher said, the attitudes are supposed to be the be your attitude. Jesus spoke the attitude to his disciples, the people who already knew the way to heaven, is through faith in Jesus. It's important to remember that so many people think that the attitudes teach us how to be saved when really he teaches the saved how to be. They all begin with the word blessed, which means happiness, blissful, or fortunate in tune with God. Jesus began by saying that saved are the poor in spirit, from Matthew 5, 3. He's not talking about the way we feel on a cold, dreary Monday morning, but the way a Christian thinks his spiritual status before God. A Christian recognizes that he doesn't have anything to offer God for his salvation. And in fact, the root meaning of the word poor in Greek is crouch, the way a beggar does. A Christian does not stand tall before God and proudly point to all the money he's given to God's work or all the time he volunteers in church and the community. Instead, a Christian crouches in the shadows with his head bowed, ashamed of the missed opportunities to serve, He's embarrassed that when he does serve God more often than not, he does so grudgingly and not joyfully. And poor in spirit means that we recognize that we can't handle it all by ourselves. So we come to God and say, God, I need you in my life, and I can't make it by myself. He continues by saying, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. You remember Charlie Brown in the cartoon strip? He was always saying, good grief. Yet, yeah. how can grief be good? Well, it's when you finally realize that you're spiritually broke and your only hope is to have God in your life that your sins break your heart and you mourn. Let me ask, how long has it been since you agonized over your sin? How long has it been since you took serious inventory of your life? The word that should come to mind now is repentance. Because when your sin becomes repulsive to you, and you turn from it and turn towards God, that's when God promises to comfort you. Jesus says we are to mourn over our sin. And he goes on to say, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now, most people think that meek means weak, a spineless person without any backbone at all. But in the original language, meek is used in bridling a horse or taming a wild animal. The word meek is a picture of power under control. So when you talk about a meek person, we're talking about one whose life has been brought under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And God is in control of his or her life. But most of us want to be in the driver's seat. And that's what the Beatitude tells us is that I am to move over to the passenger side and say, Jesus, you drive. You take hold of the steering wheel of my life. I turn it over to you. <laughs> Jesus continues and says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Let's be honest. Very 
few of us today know what it's really like to be hungry or really thirsty. In the ancient world, it was very different. In the land of sand and dust and burning sun, and the working man was never hard, never far from the borderline of real hunger and actual starvation. And water was often a scarce and precious commodity. So this beatitude is talking about someone who is starving for food and one who will die unless he has enough to drink. And in effect, Jesus is asking, just how much do you want righteousness to be right with God? To know him as the Lord and Savior. Do you want as much as a starving man wants food? Or as a man dying of thirst wants water? There are many people today who do not know what it's like to be blessed because they have never really hungered and thirsted after the things of God. That's really you. Or beggars. Mourners, hungry. Christians don't sound like a very happy bunch, do they? <laughs> Yet Jesus tells us that such people will be comforted. He says that theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And he promises that they will be filled. Jesus, of course, is speaking about the forgiveness of sins that he's won for us. That forgiveness comforts and quiets a guilty conscience. It assures us that heaven is ours and that we can be sure that we have this forgiveness because Jesus says that he fills us with it. And as I look at these four Beatitudes, I begin to realize that I'm poor in spirit and inside I mourn my sins. Inside I turn my life over to Jesus and inside I hunger and thirst after righteousness. Here's number five. Jesus says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. The principle of mercy and forgiveness runs all throughout the New Testament. And in the Lord's Prayer, which is also part of the sermon, Jesus teaches us to forgive our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Then Jesus adds, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. You see, the Bible consistently teaches that only the merciful will receive mercy. And mercy is to be reciprocal. Because we've had to receive it from God through Jesus Christ, we've got to give it to others. When we recognize what a precious gift it is, about to share. I received it from God, and now I extend it to you. Now here's the beatitude which demands that every one of us should stop and think and examine ourselves. The Greek word for cure has a number of interesting facets. It was used for soil clothes that had been washed clean. It was used to describe grain and flour that had been carefully sifted and cleansed of all Purities. And it was used to describe milk or wine that had not been mixed or polluted. So this beatitude could be translated as, Blessed man who is genuine in heart, who is authentic, who is not a phony, because such a man will see God. Now what's that mean? Does that mean I'm never going to think a bad thought the rest of my life? Does that mean I'm always going to be a wonderful person who lives a perfect Christian life? No. Bad thoughts will still come. Satan will see to that. And bad things will still happen in our lives. But we can come to God and say, God, here I am with all my cracks and scrapes and scars and sins. I know I'm not perfect. And guess what? The truth is that God can deal with it. Now we've also almost made it to the next to the last one. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Why is peacemaking almost less? Because it takes a lot of maturity to be a peacemaker. A peacemaker is not just someone who stands between two people that are fighting and separates them. A peacemaker is someone.
Testament changes the whole climate of what's going on. Instead of seeking confrontation, we are to end it. Instead of escalating arguments, we are to cool them. If there has to be a last word in an argument, let it be, I'm sorry, or I forgive you. I heard it said that there are two kinds of people. There are thermostat people, and there are thermometer people. Now, a thermostat can change the climate of the room, and by setting a thermostat, you change a cold room into one that's warm, and a hot room into one that's cool. And a peacemaker is a thermostat kind of person. A peacemaker can change the climate of the room when he or she walks in. God wants us to be peacemakers in his church. He wants peacemakers in the workplace. God wants peacemakers out in the world and people who never dwell on the negative but concentrate on the positive and see the good things that God is doing in his church and in the world. Finally, we come to the last one. Are you ready? Blessed are those who are persecuted. What? Blessed are those who Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Are you kidding? Well, why would this be last? I think it's last because the world doesn't know how to respond to people who are living so close to Jesus that everybody sees it. It's been seen in their speech and in their mannerisms that they make people uncomfortable. And people are not sure whether to applaud or to ridicule. So unfortunately, in our world, most of the time, the world chooses to ridicule or persecute them. So Jesus is saying, when you're persecuted for righteousness sake, you have made it, and you know what joy really is. The happiest people in the world are those who yield themselves to the experience of grace of God every day. Why? Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They are comforted, they inherit the earth, they are filled, they obtain mercy, they see God. And others see God in them. And they are called the children of God. So I want you to do something right now. Mentally, reach into your pocket and pull out a, a little mirror. Then you've got a mirror here. And look into it. And are you allowing God to so control and fill your life that he shows through in you? You know what he looks like. His portrait's in the Beatitudes. If not, take the first step and yield yourself to the Holy Spirit of God. It's the only way that you can experience these qualities and the blessedness Now, may the peace of God and the best soul understand us abide with us and remain with us always. Please rise and we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, and the Lord. Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. You may be seated as we sing our offertory hymn as the year cans. Uh, you're welcome and invited to bring your offerings up to the front or uh, you can send a text message or text your offering.
Blessed Lord, you have chosen to bless us beyond all measure. Though we are not worthy of your grace, for this we give you thanks and praise. May we live out your blessings in every way, and may we become a blessing to others. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for for they will be filled. Lord, when we find no satisfaction, no fulfillment in the things of this world, you bless us with the hunger and the thirst to be filled with you. For in you, we find true fulfillment of joy, of peace, of love, and of righteousness. Thank you, for, thank you Lord, for blessing us with the hunger and the thirst for you. Bless, bless us with the mercy of mercy for and they will be shown mercy. Lord, you have blessed us with the desire and the ability to show mercy to others. For you have been merciful to us. In caring for others, we are also cared for and find mercy. Show us your mercy, Lord, especially, and God, we, we pray a special prayer of intervention for the situation in Haiti. Um, it, these last couple of months have been trying, candidly, the last couple of years have been trying for the country. There's so much widespread need and so much uh, hurt and despair. But we also know that there's so much so many of us in, in this congregation are directly impacted by um, the, the ongoing crisis in Haiti. And we just ask for a hedge of protection over the, over the country. May your, may, may your spirit of peace um, fill, fill, fill the country. That, that they can, uh, would you give guidance and, and wisdom uh, to, to, the, to those of you in charge and authority. And God, um, we just pray for a restoration of so much uh, unrest and violence and protest, God, we ask for your intervention. Heavenly Father, our hearts are also filled, uh, our, our hearts are with the people of Memphis after the after the release of the disturbing video of the, the group reading of Tyree Nichols. Father, may your, may your comforting hand be upon them and, and, and upon Tyree's family, and may your peace abound in them. As a, as a society, as, as a society, we are com confronted with yet another census act of violence. May we, as your hands and feet, approach dialogues, absolutely necessary dialogues, with compassion, understanding, and grace. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your mercy, that we that we may be merciful to others. Bless, Bless us with your heart, for they will see God. God. Lord, you graciously cleanse us with, with your forgiveness, refreshing us with pure hearts and minds. May we see you, Lord, more and more each day. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing, for blessing us with purity of heart and mind. Blessed are the peacemakers, but they will be called sons of God. Lord, you have blessed us with peace that the world cannot give, so that so that peace may be magnified among us and trouble. Magnified among us in our troubled world. As our sons and daughters, make us instruments of your peace. Holy God, Lord, Holy God, your Son became the Lamb of God to take away all, the, all our sins and infirmities by his death and resurrection. Remember all who are in need of your help and healing. We, we lift up this morning, especially Ron Shaba, Martin Rodney, Jose Rodriguez Ramirez, Paul Cruz, Reverend Chris Patterson, Angel Dominguez, recovering from surgery, Dennis Plant, and we give you thanks that his surgery went well and that the, uh, the pathologies came back later. For Noah Peterson, Eric Pearson, Winston Benjamin, Maggie Huffman, Sherry Moe, Clifford Briggs, Pat Briggs, Millie DeSanti, and we add Alice and Dowdy to the purpose. And those we name in our hearts, deliver them according to your merciful will, and preserve them in the certainty that their sins are taken away. And Lord, we, we uh, pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us 
us our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So if you'd like to in the coming weeks, 
make a contribution to that glove offering. Uh, he's given so much to us in the last 35 years of the ministry. Uh, while, while anything that we assemble will only be a token uh, and a fraction of what he has is, he is given to this congregation and given to each and every one of us individually, uh, we, we love to be able to, to send him off with of a of love offering. Uh, here, immediately after church, we're going to be voting on adopting the new concept or the amendments to the Constitution and the bylaws. So, if you're a voting member of the congregation, we need you to stay for, for a few minutes. I don't know that it's going to take very long, but uh, we're, we're asking that you stick, you stick around so that we can uh, adopt the bylaws. They, they haven't been amended since what, 1988? 82. Uh, so, it's been, it's been a while since they've been amended, but uh, they, need, they needed to be modernized, they needed to, to, to be kind of more in line with what our current composition is and our current governance model is. Uh, and it's important that we have that in place for the, for the next uh, for, for the next pasture. So please stick around. There's copies of the, uh, the Constitu Constitution and bylaws in the back, so uh, please, if, you, if you'd like to review the amendments there. Easily, easy to track, but um, please stick around for that. Any other announcements? Um, Bob, thank you so much for Thank you.